Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, could you discuss um, the, uh, the players? We're talking about the adjustments y'all made to, to uh, get things started around the fourth quarter against Green Bay. How did that process go, and uh, were you pleased with the results? Sure. I um, thought the guys did a really good job of, of uh, finishing in the fourth. Um, it's been a big emphasis, you know, every single every single week is is winning the fourth. Uh, thought our guys conditioning uh, where they were mentally at the time, you know, they stuck together, hung together. You know, there's a couple drives in there that didn't go our way, but man, they were battling. Uh, they were they were in the right uh, mindset and the right place mentally uh, to go out there in the fourth quarter, uh, make the stops when we needed to, play team defense, uh, you know, and help us, you know, ultimately come away with that victory. Right, I think I asked you before the season with all the new players and coaches. The question was how quickly everything would sort of come together. Are you at all surprised? I know it's a few games in, but how well things have worked so far? Um, you know, I haven't really like got into that. You know, because it is only two weeks. You know, um, but uh, look with the the defensive staff. Um, you know, Frank and and Jerry. Those guys, uh, Hux, you know, all the assist, defensive assistants that they've done a phenomenal job of implementing what we're doing with the players, uh, getting everybody on the same page, and really to, the credit goes to those guys. I mean, they, they've really done a great job of, hey, this is what we need to get done, showing the players, hey, this is kind of the, the scheme that we're going to see, or even you know, in OTAs and and you know, with the installation meetings and things like that, um, and so not surprised, but. Uh, again, the credit goes definitely to those coaches and, and the players that have really – tell you, our guys do a great job of studying. Our, we have a, a, a smart group of, of players, um, you know, and they really enjoy football. And so that makes it easier when, you know, they're texting you questions and things like this, and they've got answers or questions like before, now you tell me about this or let's you go into this. And so they're really eager to uh, dive into what we're doing together. So I think the whole, whole unit – um, coaches and players together have been uh, working very good with each other. Have you, um, and again, I, and I know we're only two games in, but have you been able to kind of fall into a, a good rhythm into knowing player packages, who needs this for situations, who can be our three new pieces? I know you're rotating defensive line now. Mm -hmm. Got a good feel for what we're doing right now. Yeah, well, you know, guys that uh, in certain packages that we're doing, uh, putting guys at certain positions. Uh, we spent a lot of time on, you know, guys in the right place and, and uh, how, how we want the whole picture to look with the players out there. And, and so, uh, yeah, I think, you know, every week is a, is a new challenge, you know, and uh, the guys, uh, you know, we just try to move a few guys around, uh, but really keep their jobs very similar, if that makes sense, and, and uh, try to present a different picture every week and uh, but do a lot of the same things. Because you've talked about the rotation from the line, how much of it is best play, not best player, but like best pure player versus like sometimes with hockey and other sports when there's three on the line, there's more of like a chemistry issue or a, hey this player balances this player. Is is that go into some of it too when you're kind of figuring out that that front and who's playing when? I think it's it's uh it's mostly. Um, a rotation to where you're trying to even some snaps up by the end of the game. And then in the fourth quarter, uh, the guys that are playing at the high level, they're, they're going in the game. And, you know, so they're fresh. You know, last week, you know, games on the line, you know, we got our rushers in and, and you know, go that route. And so we don't want to burn those guys out early in the game, give them too many snaps, you know, those type of things. But also the other thing is um, we don't, don't look at it as a, a starter or backup or whatever that is. You know, we've got starters, and you saw Nate come in last week and play a heck of a football game. Uh, he was prepared, ready to go, but he's got a lot of reps. He's got a lot of reps, you know, um, and a lot of hours banked in what we've been doing. And so we, we, we take that approach with every player. Um, and he, in the rotation, it's the same thing. You know, we, we can carry eight to the game, and, and there's eight starters. But I guess what I'm getting at is do you – when you're putting together who's going to play together, mm -hmm. do you look at varying skill sets? You look at, you know, this guy plays well with this guy, or they run games well together, or they're playing next to each other. I'm just trying to understand how the math of, of how you maybe determine. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that too much that goes into it. Um, yeah, I just, I think that's, again, it's more of the reps and and how many guys the rep. We, you know, we want to get a certain rep count or not get too certain guys too many reps. In the, the way you guys have played in the fourth quarter of the last two, 
Uh, why is that? Why do you think safety is such a thing? A couple of things. I think uh, are conditioning, how we practice, um, strength program, strength and conditioning program, uh, mindset of our players, uh, you know, the ethos of the program, you know, finish toughness, um, you know, look at those times, you know, we want to be in condition. So, you know, we're, we're still thinking at the end of the game instead of just reacting and, and being ahead, you know, so all those things go together. Um, but did not see one player on the sideline last week, with, you know, tired or out, you, you know, uh, and a lot of that, you know, our offense did a great job too. You know, they had big time time of possession, a lot of plays, a lot of credit goes to those guys in that situation. Uh, we weren't on the field very much this last game, so they did a great job. So a lot, all of that goes together. You, you obviously never know when, when, when one of your starters, quote unquote, ends up going down, but can, can you go in, into some more detail about how you prep guys who, who may not be regular starters and to like get them ready for that exact moment? They're probably, I would assume, not seeing as many first team reps in, in some of these practices and walkthroughs, but like what goes into the process of making sure that, that, that if Trey or Nate are called upon, mm -hmm. they're ready to go? Sure. It's a, uh... Really, it's just the, the overall, you know, when we started is the rotation the OTAs and camp and preseason games and those type of things is, is, is equalizing the reps of all, for every player. Mm -hmm. You know, not getting a certain position group or a certain, you know, if a guy goes out there first, he's not getting all the, the you know, we, we, we do that in practice, you know, and, and make sure that, um, you know, what, what, whoever's on offense, that doesn't matter. It's, it's, this is your reps and what you do with those reps are, are the important things, you know, so whether it's, uh, you know, Grady, you know, going out there and, and he's taking the second set of four and it doesn't matter who he's going against. It's a, that second set or Trey going, taking the first set of four or whatever, however it's structured, uh, we'll always look at, Hey, what did you do with those reps? You know, that's the important thing, not who's it, it, it's against. It's how did you perform, uh, execute, uh, and play within, you know, those four or five or whatever the, the rotation is. Hey, Coach, when you um, look on film and see Jared Goff, and how he's played the first couple mm -hmm. games, and it seems like he's been off to a pretty hot start to start the season. So sure. just when you look at him, what kind of things do you see? Uh, very talented. Uh, played a lot of good football. Uh, super Played in the Super Bowl, you know, done uh, – had a really good career. Um, big arm. Um, knows where to go with the football. Uh, you know, he's gotten so much better as his career has gone on. And you've seen the progression of, of you know, he's a, he's an elite quarterback. Um, and so it'll be a good challenge for us. But uh, you have a ton of respect for the guy. Played against him before. Um, you know, had the utmost respect. And and, uh, and like I said, he's, he's a really good quarterback, elite quarterback in the game. What stands out most to you when it comes to Jeff Akuda on the field? His approach to the game is, uh, is he's all business. Um, it's full speed all the time. He's constantly wants to get better at the little things, the technique, um, and he's a worker. And he goes out there to work. Uh, it's a very impressive for, um, you know, he's, he, everything he's doing, he gets out there early, he stays late. He, you know, he's constantly working at the game to improve himself um, to make him the best player that he can be. Is there anything about his in-game performance that differentiates him from other cornerbacks? Well, in-game, you know, we haven't played a game with him yet, and so, uh, but I'm, I'm hoping so. <laughs> we were talking to him yesterday uh, about Coach Gray, mm -hmm. and uh, he was saying that you know, one of the amazing things about Coach Gray is it's almost like he's able to predict things that are going to happen mm -hmm. later on in the game. Um, what have you noticed from working with Jerry and how he's helped you in your role? Yeah, he's. Uh, been unbelievable help. I mean, um, again, the credit to Jerry and, and the staff. I mean, those guys done a phenomenal job. Um, but Jerry's mind, how he sees the game, it's uh, it's helped me a ton. Just just how I try to see the passing game, see how everything's put together, um, formations, routes, uh, splits, you know, all those type of things, and how he sees it um, is uh, it's very impressive. You know, just the conversations with him and. Um, how you know what he's done in the past, and and if he's done something that hasn't worked, well, then he you know surely he's done something because his career's been so long and is so successful. Something ha that has worked, 
you know, and he'll give you the, hey, this is why this didn't work and this is why this worked, you know, and spend, spend a lot of time picking his brain and, and um, you know, just trying to get around him as much as possible, you know, in the off season, during camp, and even during the season, visit with him daily about, you know, how he's seeing things, um, you know, how we're performing, the opponent's offense, you know, lean on him heavily. Um, he's a very good football coach. He's a great man. Um, you know, he's helped out uh, tremendously and have uh, mu much appreciation and respect for, for Jerry. What do you need to see from Robbie? I go from inactive to active. You know, it's just, it's a day, day to day thing. You know, just continue. Um, you know, Jeff was at, playing at a high level, you know, and the, it happened. And, um, you know, that's going to take some time to get back, um, but not to say that he's not there right now. You know, so it's just still day to day, and, and uh, hopefully today is better than it was yesterday. You know, I know you don't always like to rotate outside corners. That sounds like a little peculiar to do something that most coaches like to do. But is that something you guys would consider doing when he comes back to get him? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I won't get into that too sure. heavily. But there's a you know we we again we have we've got deep secondary. We've got a lot of guys that, that can play, and so you know Jeff's one of them. Um, you know, and so hopefully you know we can get him back in some type of way and see you know where he's at. Coach, what's your uh, impressions of the rookie uh, Jamar Gibbs for the Lions? I yeah, mean, uh, the numbers have been running hard for these last five. But. Sure. Um, Another you know ultra talented player, uh, quick, explosive, um, you know really good back, um, running the football and then also out of the backfield. You know he's he's a, he's an electric player. Um, you know he's got great speed. Um, you know second game you know three uh, game three going in, you know and so, uh, but you saw you saw him progress from his first game to his second game. You you saw him get better on tape. You know and so. Uh, you know he's, a, you know he's a, he is a quick, active football player that you know causes some matchup issues and and um, you know it's things out of the backfield that does really well. I mean you, you can feel like he's when he comes out of the backfield he's got a very good knack his route tree things like that. Um, you know so it'll be a good challenge. Jerry mentioned uh, yesterday that uh, Landman has played so well that maybe y'all need to. Integrate a, a three linebackers package. Um, you know, when Troy gets back out there, how do you anticipate um, integrating Landman as well? Um, well, <laughs> there's been some discussion of a lot of different packages. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there'll be uh, certain things that we can do, you know, and, and uh, to get those guys on the field together, possibly. Maybe this game, maybe not. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we there is some certain things that we can do in certain packages to get those guys out there. Um, you know, we'll see when that comes up. Circling back to my brain part, obviously he hasn't played a game here, but when it comes to Kuda on film from his Detroit days, what do you like about his game? Aggressive, uh, really good. He plays with really good speed. You see, when he's on the field, he can go, and he plays that way. He practices that way, uh, so that that's really impressive. And then you know, he's, he's such a big corner. He's so big and long, and he's a physical player, and so he's got a really good combination of size, strength, speed. Um, kind of sounds like we're talking to defense lineman, but you know, now it's it's Jeff out there, and, and that's the way he plays the game. Uh, it's awesome to see. Um, you know, when Jeff's on the field, it's uh, you know, you feel a confidence. With him, the other players, you know, and uh, think he's gotten a lot better with uh, Jerry and Jack, you know, continually coaching him and things like that. Um, seen his progression since he's been here. Uh, ha very happy that he's here. Coach, were you um, pleased with how the offense was able to close out the game there? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously what we were able to do in the fourth quarter against a very good opponent that we have a lot of respect for in Green Bay and that coaching staff, um, who a lot of us know. Um, our ability as an offense to uh, you love the way that the mentality uh, that we end up playing with uh, to go finish out the game and the belief. Um, and so we got the outcome offensively of getting down there, trying to score points uh, and putting ourselves in position uh, to help us win a football game, which was great. Why do you think you guys have been so successful in the fourth quarter? Not, I mean, obviously defense. 
why is that being understood? I give a lot of credit to um, the way Coach Smith sets up practice, um, the way that he talks to the, the players and for us as assistants to carry along the message. Um, it's the way we train. Um, it's not just lip service. Go out there and do it. And, um, you know, players know because it's the NFL that you're playing great opponents with great coaches, that it's a four quarter game, regardless of what happens in the first few quarters. And um, it's just a mentality uh, from top down in which um, it's our job as assistant coaches to help implement. But Coach Smith does a great job of making sure the players understand um, it's not just come out strong, you start strong, you finish strong, and you practice that way. And that's how practices are set up. And it's, a, it's really a, a credit to how he runs the program. You said it's twice the, the practices are set up a certain way. How do you guys set up practices to, to, to? Well, I mean, it's just, it's more about, again, right? It's everybody has their own way of doing things. It's more about the way, the fact that how we go about um, our practices and with our players is a mentality, right? You're going out and you're trying to give them the looks that you think you're going to get, but you're also trying to challenge the players um, and give them looks that, hey, if we had this look, which they have shown, okay, how are you going to react to it? And from the way that it's structured to the way that we practice, ultimately for us, Right, it's just it's making sure the players understand the mentality in which we want to go play football. So it's as much mental as it is kind of anything else you think? Or? Well, I mean, it's it's football, right? There's a lot that goes into the physicality of it. Right. right. I mean, you get to this level, and obviously players, right, have gone above a certain threshold to enter this league in terms of athletic ability. Well then, right, it's now going through the mental part of it and being able to go in there, like today, right? We're processing another part of the game plan. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna try to execute that game plan to the best of our ability and coach it to the best of our ability and then coach after, right, practice. But sure, I mean, football is as much physical as mental, especially at this level, um, and getting guys to understand how the, how the opponent is trying to attack you and then how we're trying to counter that, right? What we're trying to put out there. So. Again, yeah, there's a lot of that goes on, but but ultimately, you want guys to feel confident to play fast. You play fast, you play physical. Um, usually, good things, right, occur for you, and that's why you create opportunities for yourself as an offense. Yeah, it's obviously he hasn't played a ton of games in his career. So when you see the first part of the game where he's misreading a coverage and missing a throw or something like that, is that something you you maintain confidence that will come along in time, basically, as he plays more games? I think any quarterback. Um, I've been around guys who have, um, you know, been in their sixth start, and I've been in guys around their 14th year. Um, and again, I think when it comes to either reading something or getting yourself into a game, every quarterback has been different uh, that I've had the, the opportunity uh, to be around. And so ultimately, through, you got to remember, right, it is a four-quarter game. There's different adjustments going on, and you want to make sure that each position, not just the quarterback, understands when we come back to the sideline, right? What did we just see? How can we essentially take advantage of, or right? How do we combat what just happened? And then we make our adjustments, but there's not a ton of dwelling on what just happened necessarily as much as either, Hey, that's good. Or, Hey, let's correct that and let's move on. Um, but for any position, Des or the other guys in the team, it's just more about, okay, what are we going to have next series to be able to go out there and execute at a high level? Yeah. I was going to ask you that when you, how it works on the sideline there. He comes off, off the top after a series, bad happen, whatever. Do you immediately basically go to the, the iPad and the tablet? And, and yeah, I mean, I think each quarterback's different. I've had certain quarterbacks that literally went to themselves for just a count, right? Didn't come right to the bench, kind of clear their mind. But I've had other quarterbacks that come right to you and say, hey, let's talk through it. I've had other quarterbacks that are like, hey, I got it, Rags. Like, I'm, I know exactly what I did. We're good. What's the next thing? And so, again, when you go through that process of the different quarterbacks that you've been with, you understand how they work. And then it's my job, obviously, to make sure that those mistakes don't happen again and try to correct those as a guy who's helping the quarterback. And it's, again, it's a staff thing as well. There might be something coming from upstairs. Coach Smith might be saying something and we're really in information. But in terms of Des or any of the players, there is their own process. And again, that's their, that'd be a question for them and how they handle that. But for me, Right? It's my job as a coach is to look at the information we're given and make sure we can give the players the best chance of information given back to them that they can use in the next series or as the game progresses. 
Or is he different all the time? Or does he always come straight to you? Or does he go off on his own? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't thought of it like that. I mean, there's times where um, if it's something, if he's like, right, touchdown or something like that, he might be right to his teammates. Or, hey, there might be something that he uh, grabs someone as he's coming off the field and they're talking about something. To me, there's a process. There's time in between. I'm not looking just to grab them. Um, again, the quarterbacks come to a certain area and then we talk about it. And then we get together as an offense if there's adjustments need to be made at the different positions. And then we kind of move through our process that way. Is how he processes and any question coming to Notre Dame? And so. No, I mean, we've. I'm just wondering if there's still like levels of unknown. Let me maybe broaden that. Are there still levels of unknown with him and how he handles certain situations with you guys because of. Yeah, I I think what we try to do, right? We try to, again, in practice, is we try to put as much, apply as much pressure in certain situations as possible. And therefore, right, you're using your training and try to bring it to the game. Um, in terms of how he goes about those things, yeah, sure. Can you account for every situation? I mean, I think you know that. Like, that's not going to be possible. There's always things that come up um, that you're going to sit there and go, okay, the next time if that does happen, right, you learn from experience. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if it's him or the other position groups, um, you, the goal is obviously to correct, to move on, and to look ahead and, until – you sit there and go, because I've been a part of where you dwell on things, right? And you can't move on. And the quarterback, right, especially him, is thinking about the last play. And it's hard to play the position if you're thinking about what just happened and not looking forward to the next play. And that's the mentality for all players, not just the quarterback. But that's obviously been what I've been around the most, is the quarterbacks that can just, regardless if it's good or bad, go to the next one and able to process the next play. I think ultimately those are the guys that are able to navigate the ups and downs of a game, a season, and a career. You know, no, yeah, and believe it or not, no. <laughs> the family, I, I, that's a great question. I don't think they like me anymore. Siblings, everything else, yeah. Now you just brought up a uh, family issue. So now I have to go, <laughs> I probably not have to make a, con- make a phone call. All right, this is done, right? No, no, no. Uh, John played through two games, and uh, did y'all have to scout Gibbs too when they were right there together last year? Yeah, I mean, it's the NFL draft, right? And it's our job is on that side of the ball. And we're going to go through the prospects um, and be able to evaluate. And so they've, again, knowing, um, look, Aaron Glenn's a former teammate of mine, mm-hmm. right? I know some of those guys in that staff. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for what they do um, and how they've been able to put together uh, their roster and how they go play. And so regardless if you're talking about an offensive player or you're talking about defensive scheme or defensive coaches um, or some of the guys on the offense um, that I know, just a ton of personal respect uh, for how they've been able to go out there, execute their job, get guys to play fast, get guys to play hard, and we're going to have a huge challenge for us. What is it about Deshaun that can still trust in him for you all to count on and call on him on those those four? Yeah, I think for us, right, regardless of the year of the player or what position he plays, there's a standard in which we want to operate offensively. And with that standard becomes a level of professionalism, understanding your your job you're responsible for and what you're accountable for, and you do it in the practice field. And so that is instills trust, regardless of where I've been, what sport I played, right? Practice is the training ground to build the inner confidence to go out and play. And so each guy that gets a helmet for us on Sunday, that's really part of the deal, right? You're a starter regardless of what personnel we run out there. And the way we feel about it is if you're going to go out there, we have trust in you. And it's just, that's how we go about our business. Steve, Steve, you can play. How does that potentially alter some of I mean, we've, again, you've seen, right, CP through the years here. Um, You've seen us use other personnel packages. Again, we just go out and we play the way that we play. Um, We try to take advantage of things that uh, we think we see on film. And ultimately, we try to play fundamentally sound, physical, and fast. And so regardless of who's out there, that's, that's really how we're trying to handle it. Players usually make the biggest jump from season one to two. Do you think the same can be said about teams from week one to week two? Yeah, that's a good question. 
because I think, right, if you go back and you, know, you look at the different starts of seasons and there's history, right, of teams starting a certain way, ending a certain way, regardless if that's good or bad, right? Um, and again, everybody's evolving. We're adjusting. There's a 17-game season, right? A couple of years ago, there wasn't 17 games. The preseason's been altered. The time between the last preseason game and the start of the regular season. I remember when I was a player, right? You went from preseason four, which I was a star of, because that's where the backups to the backups played, right? And then literally, that was a Thursday night. Everybody played it, right? And then, bam, people were going, right? And then but you're into the next, right? Following week, like you're into game prep and let's roll. Like there was the way it was structured, right? And that's a few CBAs ago. I guess I'm aging myself, not just the gray in the beard, but, but that's it, right? But now that's different. We're evolving. And so everybody, again, has their own practices and how they go about doing that and implementing it. And so, yeah, to answer your question in a roundabout way, yeah, week one, you're trying, obviously guys are going out there trying to play, they're playing four quarters maybe for the first time. Week two, right, you're starting to get a little more a tread. And then obviously as we move forward here, um, you're starting to build up your roster, you're building up your depth, and you're going out and you're starting to get a feel for how the opponents are starting to play because there's more 2023 film now. You're not watching as much 2022 film necessarily because there's new personnel and they're playing their guys differently. So that's also part of the process, I think. Is that a double-edged sword when more film comes out where you get to learn the defense, but they're also learning the offense? No, I don't, I don't think necessarily in, in that way. I think ultimately, right, everybody has the same tape. It's just how you interpret the information. Because again, there's only 24 hours in a day. Everybody gets the same amount of tape. It's not like when you're in high school and you're picking the tape up from some a coach in the middle of nowhere and you're exchanging tapes or when I was in college they had to fly the tape and you're waiting for it like it's all there right but the really good coaches I've been around can interpret the information quickly and decisively and make decisions and the guys that need this him and Hall I'm not saying they're not good football coaches but it, their process takes longer and so for us it's we see the information what can we do with it and how can we use it to our advantage you regularly I, that's a, that's play right, D-Lad, More like clipboard penmanship. Oh, clipboard into the yeah. Is that better? Yeah. My two starts were unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> My point is, you you've been on both sides of this in terms of coaching and playing. There's a lot of conversation about first first grass. Does that what, did that matter to you at all as a player? These are things, right? Yeah. When I had to take a knee. Right for victory, yeah. I didn't want the rubber pellets on my no. I <laughs> look again, maybe because uh, the quarterback spot my focus was on something completely different, those conversations weren't prevalent, you know, 20 years ago. Oh, gosh, 20 years ago. when I was a player, right? But, um, but no, I mean, again, guys speak for themselves, um, go out and just, just coach football. Ah, uh, there we go, man. I don't even do it. And, and, and one was to myself. Yeah. Was it? Oh, absolutely it was. I think I ran for more yards in one of the games than I threw for. That was my dual threat ability. No one else saw it that way. Do you, do you often right. reminisce some of those fourth preseason games or moments that you have? Yeah, I, and I'm going to get fact-checked on this, and I'm probably wrong, but I remember um, having a good preseason. Like, I felt good about myself. Twelve months later, I was out of the league. So it is what it is. Right. So what have you done for me lately, Doug Deal? You gave us quotes, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Are we good? Thanks guys. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Coach. Hey, just a brief recap from last week's game. Overall great team win. Yeah. You talk about the special teams phase. Thought our guys played really hard, played the game penalty free, which you, that's what you want to look for. It helps with field position. We added Mike Hughes back there as a punt returner. Thought he did a great job with decision making back there as a returner. And, the, you know, he put us in position. So, one, we have the football in the next play. And then that last return, he, he had a 16 yard return that would, which helped on that drive with field position and that field goal. Uh, Koo, he stays consistent. He's working, you know, works his tail off each and every day. And it's not just him. You know, Bradley and Liam, they do a great job with the operation. Yeah, it's unfortunate that Koo did miss a PAT. But you could tell with our guys, especially with the old linemen and the, the our, our operation, that they do a great job staying in the process, being process driven. And we knew if we got the next opportunity out there, which we did, the next couple opportunities, that we we're going to put the ball through the uprights and help our team 
be in a position to win ball games. So I just want to open it up to any questions. Well, Mike's future post for the uh, what do you think? What what would, what should we do? Would you put him back there? We got we got options. I'm, I mean, you're the one that's getting paid more than us. So <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, I'm gonna start calling you Bucks Deluxe, man. You work for ESPN, <laughs> so um, we have a bunch of different guys. We got Scotty, D. Alford. We got you know Mike Hughes, B. John's back, been back there. We have guys on the practice squad that can help us based on standard elevation. So we're putting the best eleven out there. If Mike's out there for that rep, then he's going to be out there for that rep. So, But I will say this. Mike did a great job last week with his fundamentals, his technique, urgency to get underneath the football, making the right decisions. And even on the one where we had the 15-yard on the face mask, he had a four-yard return, but he just didn't go down easily. He tried to break that tackle, which forced a face mask, and we got 15 yards off it. So I count that as a net for us is 19 yards, which that drive ended on a field goal. I, I get that, but it's, so is Mike your guy or not? I mean, it's, it seems like it's a pretty straightforward question. We have multiple guys. We'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, so when Coop misses that, does he come over and it looks like he just pulled it like a golf shot? Do they work through that or he, that's an internal thing? Yeah, we, we look at, we, we look, analyze everything. We analyze the snap, we analyze the spot, we analyze the contact on the football, and even Ku's approach as he, get, as he gets set up. You know, the snap and hold, everything was good. If you think about a D-Led, if you go out and you shoot 100 basketballs, you're probably going to miss a couple and you're going to have a messed up technique. Or if you're making contact as a golfer on, when you're driving, uh, driving on the driving range or if you're on a par three, those things happen. Still to this day, Ku's one of the most accurate kickers in the NFL. I believe he's the second most accurate kicker in the NFL. And it doesn't just happen by accident. He stays process driven. He's clutch when we need him. He's made clutch kicks for us throughout our time here, being in Atlanta, going on to year three. And we just focus on our technique. We even we even analyze things D-led when he makes a field goal. When he makes a field goal, just because the ball went through the uprights, it, may, it might not have been the right, the best operation or the best contact on the football. So we could get fixated on the results or we could really dial in and get focused on the whole entire operation when it comes to snap, hold, kick, and the other variables are protection. Yes, he will be back. If he is back there, yes. I mean, he's the best in the league. I, w I would think that we would want him back there if he was on. I would think so. Yeah. I'm just checking. I'm just, I mean, I know. You know you gave me I'll give you. I'll give you a yes. Guys to play punt return. But hey, on kickoff return, we have multiple guys on kickoff return too. So, <laughs> and we're, you know, starting with our personnel department and Coach Smith, we're in a great op position where we have multiple guys that we trust with the ball in their hands, and we on special teams, just like offense and defense, we have a lot of positionless players. How dangerous are their returners? I know Dorsey's down, but. Uh, I'm uh, surprised they didn't give you a call, D. led to go back there and return for that. <laughs> get you, a, get you on a one-week contract. Uh, you know they have Greg Reynolds. He's been a kickoff returner for them. Um, he's done a lot in the preseason. Doesn't have any regular season returns, but you see him as a ball carrier. He's north-south. He breaks arm tackles. Does a good job of running through contact, and he's a fearless runner. Xavion Knight, who they added to their 53-man roster, we actually went against him last year in preseason versus the Jets. Played at NC State. He had, I want to say, three career returns in college, kickoff returns as a returner. He could bring it to the field, to get vertical in the boundary. He, he runs through and he accelerates through contact. So we're preparing just in case they put him back there. Then when you talk about the punt return game with Cleve Raymond, he scored a touchdown last year versus the Jets, averaged over like 13 yards. So he's getting the first down every time he touches the ball. Yes, he's small in stature, but he plays bigger than – his height and weight, and he's fearless with the football in his hand. So last week he did a great job towards the end of the fourth quarter, flipping the field, and Detroit were able to get the ball to the 50-yard line, which led them to their last drive to make the field goal to tie the game up at end of regulation. So our hands are we're, our hands are full this week. Great opportunity to go against these guys. Dave Phipp, the coordinator there, D-Led, does a great job um, when he talk about their four phases, plus their two other phases, field goal, field goal, block. The guys are going to play physical. They're going to play fast. Situationally aware, we got to be alert of anything because they're looking to gain an extra possession, extend the drive, or flip the field in the return game, or kind of constrict us in the coverage game. Yeah, you've been a registered Mean anything more to you than maybe some of your other trips you're going to take? Um, 
I wouldn't say that. I've never been blessed with the opportunity to coach at different places. I was three years with the Chargers. I did an internship in 15 with the Lions, and then I spent two years as a full-time coach in Detroit and then going on year three here. So diverse pool when it comes to different organizations. And it, when my time there, I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for my time there to grow as a coach, you know, and my family. We, you know, yes, it was during COVID and it was unfortunate to go through that, but our family grew stronger. We spent a lot of time with each other. I grew as a coach when it came to, you know, talking about football, X's and O's, understanding situational football. And Detroit is a great organization. It was a blessing to work for that organization. We talk about Sheila Ford, President Wood, and, and what they're doing there. And I have a lot of respect for what they're doing now. Uh, I look at it as, an, as another opportunity for our team to grow and get better and compete this week. Yes, I do have history there with that organization. I still have people that still work there that I'm so close with, but it just makes it for a better um, better time and a better experience. And it's gonna be a great atmosphere come Sunday. It's gonna be really weird. And it's, I had not heard about it. And we know I was in Detroit for a while until yesterday. Terry Grant said that the, like, the lights make it dreary and the lights kind of are different in Ford Field. Is that like, that's not anything I ever heard before yesterday. Is there something to that? Or no? Um, I wouldn't, for me personally, be coaching there and then going back there last year, I know they do something different with their lighting. It's a cool atmosphere. You kind of call it, like, you know, stadium or theater lighting where you have the lights just mostly on the field as the main attraction. You see it like in NBA All-Star games and stuff like that. But I don't think it will be any effect to our players. There's a 100-yard field, there's two field goal posts, and there's a football, and we get to compete. I know nothing compares to, like, having the game on the line in the moment, but how do you practice pressure? Something I learned from like Tony Dungy, uh, just reading a couple of his books, he talks about controlled adversity. So uh, us as coaches, we could create adversity. We could create certain situations in practice to help with that and help our players with those pressure situations. Yes, the, si the situation, the pressure is real, but we can't get fixated on that. And I've, I spoke about that before, D-Led and Mike. If you, if you understand the situation, you understand the time of the game, the score, down and distance, yes, that's good. But at the end of the day, you still have to perform and execute your technique when it comes to that given play. In order for a player to be the best teammate, they have to do their job at the highest level. So we spend more time on, hey, yes, this is the situation, but what is your technique? Is your pad level right? Is your stance, your split? All right, where's your eyes? Um, who are you blocking? Who are you rushing against? Uh, what guy am I blocking? Okay, as a kicker, am I making my contact? Snapper, Liam, hey, am I snapping the ball with the correct laces? Am I putting in the right location for Bradley to catch the ball? Bradley's a punter. No matter whether he's punting or, or, or holding for coup, he has to catch the ball. How's your catch mechanics? So we focus on all those little things, which helps the players, one, not feel in that moment of having that angst and worried about the outcome rather than focusing on the now and the present that when they're down, so then we can like what the outcome presents at the end of it. And we could focus on those little things It's gonna to add to big results. Do you simulate that ever in practice where like say he misses, it's like run a lap or something like that? Yeah, no, I, we don't, you know, I don't do that type, type of things, but Coach Smith and our entire coaching staff, we do work a lot of different situations and just to bring awareness of it. We don't wanna to wait till the game to be in a certain situation in order for us to hold our team accountable as coaches and players, we have to present and provide them with those tools. It's no different than parenting. If I, t I wanna help my, my daughters with something, I'm not gonna just say, hey, wait for something to happen and be like, hey, you shouldn't have done that. Try to teach them the lessons and provide them with the necessary tools before that situation presents itself. And then sometimes you have to learn the hard way and there's certain situations that it's hard to replicate. But us as a coaching staff and a like big, uh, I say big props to Coach Smith. He does a great job of, one, showing situations in the meeting room, and then we work a lot of different situations in practice and walkthroughs, and we slow it down and we talk to it in all three phases to provide our guys with the tools to go out on Sunday to be able to execute. Anything else for Coach? Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. All right.